In this presentation, we will review the unwanted noises that can present themselves in sound systems as well as their common causes and solutions. While these are the most common causes and their solutions, it is possible another issue is present and this may take a more intricate look at the system to track down the problem. Distortion is a very common problem. The following clip demonstrates what a normal sound should sound like compared to a distorted version. The main causes for distortion are improper gain structure, a high level signal being amplified, and bad content such as a distorted recording. The only ways to fix distortion are to use proper gain structures so as not to overdrive the equipment and use quality content. Hiss is caused by the exact opposite issue as distortion. The following clip demonstrates hiss. The main causes are improper gain structure, low level signal being amplified, therefore also amplifying inherent system noise, unused faders or knobs being turned up, or bad content. To remove hiss, use proper gain structure by setting the gain correctly. The input signal is turned up and the inherent noise floor stays down. This way the noise or hiss is amplified less and is not audible. This is the same reason unused faders and knobs should be turned down. If those channels are not used but are still on, only the noise is being amplified, creating an audible hiss. Hiss can be a problem in bad content and a different source or recording should be used to remove it. The following clip demonstrates the presence of a 60 Hz hum. This hum is caused by a ground loop. Ground loops are created by the differential of two power sources. The graphic shows the equipment attached to two circuits both tied to earth ground. Due to potential differences in having two separate earth ground points, some current will flow on the equipment ground and induce a 60 Hz hum. To resolve this problem for sports sound systems, the easiest method is usually to cut the shield wire or install a transformer on the audio signal cable at the receiving equipment. By disconnecting the shield wire, the ground loop is broken, yet both pieces of equipment are still grounded. Do not break or disconnect the power ground, as this can make the equipment unsafe. Another common noise is the tick demonstrated in the following clip. The tick is caused by the Allsport console signal. When this is run with the audio signal, it bleeds over into the audio signal, causing an audible tick. The solutions for the tick are to isolate the signal cable in different conduits or keep them separate, transfer one of the signals to fiber instead of analog, or run the Allsport wirelessly. A difficult problem to solve is echo. Echo is caused by reflections off nearby structures or surfaces. This is a test this track a test to simulate track. audio issues audio such issues as echoes and, echoes and feedback. To fix echo, there are only a few solutions, none of which are usually easy. One option is to direct the sound so it does not hit those surfaces. Sometimes this can be achieved simply by aiming the speaker in a slightly different direction, but often the speaker itself will need to be relocated. Another option is to install acoustic dampening material, however this can get very expensive. Feedback is caused by sound leaving the speakers and the microphone picking up that sound and reamplifying it. This is a test track to simulate audio issues such as echoes and feedback. To fix feedback issues, the first step is to make sure proper gain structure is used. It is also important to note that the right type of microphone is used. For example, a referee wants to use a lapel style microphone, but there is a headset available. The headset is the better option because it is closer to the mouth and therefore needs less gain to amplify the referee's voice. This means that less of the sound system will be picked up in the microphone, thereby reducing the chance of feedback. Care must also be taken when positioning a microphone. If it is pointed towards the sound system, feedback is more likely to occur than when pointing away. The farther away or farther out of the sound system's pattern, the less likely feedback is to occur. A helpful tool for assisting in feedback issues is the Digital Feedback Reducer. This component finds problem frequencies and cuts them down to eliminate feedback at those frequencies. An often easy to fix but harder to track down issue is a crackling sound. 
This is caused by bad connections or cables, a bad computer sound card, or bad drivers in the speakers, or in plugging devices while unmuted, especially if phantom power is turned on. The quickest and easiest thing to check is cables and connections. This can be checked by unmuting channels and or disconnecting cables one at a time and seeing if the problem goes away. The problem can then be repaired by replacing the cable or fixing the connection. If all cables seem to be fine, the next step is to try a different computer or a different sound card. If the problem goes away using different equipment, a new sound card is needed. If the internal sound card in the computer is the issue, a good option is to use an external sound card. If everything at the front end checks out, a likely problem is a bad driver in the speaker cabinet. Further troubleshooting will be needed at this point. If the popping occurs while unplugging or plugging in devices, make sure to mute the channel beforehand and the popping will stop. The following clip demonstrates audio artifacts due to network issues. Artifacts or dropouts can be caused by too much network traffic, bad connections, or bad components. To resolve these issues, remove unnecessary network traffic. For example, something may be plugged into the audio switch that shouldn't be and should be removed. Check for switch loops. This is when a network has more than one connection between switches or ports. A Cat5 cable could be plugged into two ports in the same switch, or there may be two cables connecting switches causing a loop. Also check and test cables to make sure that a bad cable isn't the issue. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have further questions about our products, please contact the Dactronix audio representative. Feel free to view our other training videos available at www.dactronix.com support. Keyword sports sound.